Hey guys, my name is Rahil. I'm here at South by Southwest with Youngri. I'm here with Anish. Yep, yep. my name is Anish. Uh, I'm an undergrad student at the University of Texas and I'm the founder of Top Tier Learning. Yeah, so tell us a little more about your company. What do you guys do? Sure, so uh, Top Tier Learning was founded when I was actually in high school. Uh, I wasn't doing too well in the class and uh, I hired my friend to help me out with my math homework. Uh, I realized the strength of peer-to-peer -peer tutoring and so three years later uh, top tier learning is a nationwide peer to peer tutoring network. Basically, instead of charging anywhere from $60 to $80 an hour with these professional resources, yeah. we use our high school students as our primary resources and we're able to charge $20 an hour. Yeah, that's really cool. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And you know, it's been a great journey. Uh, we've helped hundreds of kids across the US and we're hoping to grow. So what's your end goal with this company? So the end goal is eventually to get to any ever, to uh, every community in the U.S. Um, okay. Because we really believe that uh, this problem of overpriced tutoring uh, uh -huh. occurs not just in, say, Texas, or yeah. just Illinois, or California, but across the nation. I definitely agree with you. So how do you hope to accomplish that lofty goal? Because I think that's a really cool goal. Yeah, so what we do from an expansion standpoint is we try to email college counselors around the U.S. Okay. Uh, these college counselors uh, really have the best of high school students in mind, mm -hmm. um, and they know their high school students the best. Uh, so really by finding somebody whose job is to help their students yeah. as well as help, uh, help our company expand, we're able to make that happen. That does um, make sense. And then we're creating an app that will help with expansion yeah. simply because it's a lot easier to network through technology than it is through work. Okay, so what's going to be special about your app? So our app is basically going to have everything from the click of a button. So right now we use different APIs such as Stripe, such as Slack, uh, such as Acuity for scheduling. But really this app is going to connect everything together and make it a lot easier for our clients. That's really cool. Um, do you think you're going to have features such as like background checks and verifications? So the way that we do it is unlike an Uber and where, uh, uh, where anybody can pretty much apply yes. and get background checked, uh, everybody from our company is actually screened personally. I see. Um, so we hire high school students that are seniors, uh -huh. and those are the managers of our branches. Those okay. are the ones that you know take care of all the professional work. Yeah. Uh, they're the ones that hire their tutors, and then they're verified through us. Okay. So really, we don't ever want to automate this system because yeah. we believe that tutoring is a very hands-on and personal field. Uh -huh. And as soon as we start to automate stuff, we can sometimes uh, let go of our quality controls. I like that. I like that. So could you tell us about your experience as an entrepreneur? Because um, I know you're 20 years old. That's yep. pretty young for an entrepreneur. So how's it been so far? You know, it's been incredible. Um, so I go to the McCollum School of Business uh -huh. um, and I'm studying finance. And a lot of the times when we're, when we're learning about stuff such as accounting, yeah. Uh, really getting to apply it to my startup has yeah. made all the difference. Um, it's helped me understand concepts a lot better, okay. but also it's made me think of things in a new variety. Um, simply instead of just learning straight from the textbook, yeah. I try to apply it to my startup and see what, pen what potential situations can come up. That's also cool. simply the people that I've met um, through different startup competitions mm -hmm. has been great because learning about their story as well as their way of thinking has helped influence my own. That's really cool. So what, what's your major right now? Uh, I'm finance um, okay. and also history. Okay, so yep. what made you pick that? Is it, is it because yeah. of your entrepreneurship journey? So actually, so top tier learning actually influenced a lot because uh -huh. when I was first starting, I had to identify key financial drivers. I, I had to figure out exactly how I'm gonna like uh, how we're gonna make money off the uh -huh. start, right? I mean, it's the basic goal of every business. Yeah. Um, so really, getting a revenue breakdown um, as well as kind of a profit analysis when I was 16 years old in high school yeah. is kind of what led me to a passion of finance. Um, and then I really like history simply because I think a liberal arts degree is really helpful. Uh -huh. But also, if we analyze our past, we can often make sure we don't make the same mistakes in the future. I like that. So what advice do you have for aspiring entrepreneurs that are still in college but really want to get involved in the entrepreneurship scene? Yeah, um, a lot of times you hear, all, uh, you hear about people making it big. Uh, yeah. in the entrepreneur world, and a lot of times you hear that it's pretty overdone. Um, I've heard both takes simply being in Austin, um, and really I think it's starting small. I think it's taking an idea that you have, um, yeah. look, at, look at the problems around you on a day-to-day -day basis, and try to figure out solutions for those. Okay. And often if you can think of solutions to your own problems, that's, those problems are often shared by everybody else as well. Okay. Um, so my biggest piece of advice is every idea that you come up with, try to think of your, uh, try to think inside your head of problems that go wrong. Mm -hmm. and if you can't think of anything, go ahead and run. Dude, that's perfect. So when you started off, was it just you or did you have a founding team? Uh, no, so when I started off, we had a co-founder as well. Okay. Um, he goes to the uh, to Indiana University. Okay. Um, simply because of the distance, we decided to split off. So I now see. I'm the sole owner. Um, but at the same time, we do have an executive team. 
Um, they're mostly at the University of Texas, but we also have somebody at Case Western as well. That's really cool. So do you have any advice for finding an ideal co-partner? Because it seems like you really enjoy your co-founder, right? Yeah, no, um, he was great. Uh, what I would say is find somebody who fills your weaknesses. <laughs> you don't want somebody that's good at everything you're good at, because then as a team, you'll still have weaknesses. That's true. But if you find counterparts to people that can really fill in those gaps, you can improve holistically. So I'm assuming your co-founder was also a good friend of yours, right? Yep, yep. So uh, initially, uh, we were great friends and we still are. Yeah. Um, but what I would caution against is that there's a fine line between treating somebody like a friend and somebody like a partner. Gotcha. Um, and that's something that I have learned throughout the years. For example, uh, now most of the executive team uh, are I also consider as my best friend. Yeah. And it's tough because sometimes when I'll text them, I'll text them as a friend and not as a partner and vice versa. Yeah. Um, and so really it's important to draw that line and make sure that at the end of the day, your motivation is to make the company better, but uh -huh. also keep that relationship going. Perfect. So just to wrap this up, um, I'm going to ask you the three questions that Lorenzo loves to ask. Sure. So the first one is, what is one book you would recommend to entrepreneurs to read? Yeah, so I would do uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins. Okay. Um, and in that book, a lot of what he does is case studies by Fortune 500 companies, simply because it was written a while ago. Yeah. But a lot of that I've actually used towards top tier learning. For example, uh, one of the chapters he talks about cutting off the excess weight. Um, yeah. If you see somebody that's not working well on your team, let them go early. And you know, that's something I've really experienced and it's been hard to do at such a young age because yeah. often these are your friends. But once again, it's about the greater interest of the company. And also I've learned that instead of picking somebody on our team simply to accomplish one mission, yeah. find the best people and then whatever missions come up, you'll usually be able to accomplish. That's perfect. So the second question, it's usually um, asked to older entrepreneurs. It's like, sure. If you're, if you could go back in time and tell your 20 year old self like a piece of advice, what would you tell? Well, you unfortunately, I am 20. So. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, if I could go back in time and talk to my 16 year old self, uh, I would say, don't take everything so seriously. Yeah. Um, I think when I was starting up, I just wanted to get this product out as fast as possible, and because of that, I really didn't think through some of the stuff that I should have from a, um, from a larger scale. Um, for example, we launched our website and it had a lot of glitches. We didn't really know how to do a customer feedback loop or any of that. Um, and looking forward now, we lost some of our initial customers because of that. But nonetheless, um, I really like how the initial finding, uh, founding team was able to come up with a larger picture in mind. So for example, I've never tutored a day, a day in my life. Yeah. Um, and that's a system that we revolved around. We wanted to make it so big that I couldn't tutor all of our clients. And luckily now that is the case. Okay, so how quickly did you launch going off of that? Yeah, so uh, it was founded in February of 2014 now. Um, and I thought of the idea a month before that. So in about 30 days we had a launch. I know in Austin you have a lot of 30 day startups. Yeah. Um, and that is a reality. I mean, I feel like if you have an idea that you're so passionate about, it really never seems like work at all. And top tier learning never seems like work. It's always fun. Um, it's my favorite thing to do and I can't really imagine life without it. Dude, that's perfect, that's perfect. All right, so last question. To us, um, our slogan is young in spirit, hungry in ambition. Sure. What does younger mean to you? Yeah, I mean, younger just means being innovative regardless of your age. I mean, I have seen people that are 25 kill it, I've yeah. seen people that are 59 kill it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I really think that in this day and age with technology and globalization, yeah. age isn't as big of a factor anymore. So when you are younger, I think it's not really caring about your age and typical stereotypes or hierarchies or any of that. And yeah. it's just going out and doing what you do best. So if you have a go, so if you have a good idea, you go out and kill it. Perfect. Thank you for that advice. If anybody wants to reach out to you, how can they find you? Uh, so we have our Twitter and our Facebook at Top Tier Learning. Uh, otherwise, my email is Anish, A-N-I-S-H, at toptierlearning.com. Or check out our website, toptierlearning.com. Perfect. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem.